Hi everyone, so I'd just like to go over the basics of analyzing quantitative survey data using SPSS. And so I won't cover everything, but I'll cover the basics. And I'm using a fictitious data set uh, whereby you're studying the relationship between uh, college students' depression levels and their sense of belonging and sense of autonomy. And so your survey had some questions about depression. And so uh, these questions, uh, 31, the questions 31 have to do with uh, depression. And then question 32, uh, all the way to 32A12 have to do with sense of belonging. And then 31, B1 and B2 have to do with sense of autonomy and control. And then you have some demographic statistics uh, questions like what year they are in in college, what race they belong to, um, whether they've ever used counseling services at school, how many extra hours of schoolwork they do per week. So the results in this fictitious data set, I'm sure, will be kind of crazy because they're truly kind of made up. But let's just see where we go. So the very first thing you want to do after downloading your data set from Qualtrics is to clean up your labels. In this case, I already did, but usually your your labels here will have the questions. So if you, in your survey, you'd say, please rate, rate the extent to which you agree or disagree with the following statements. You'll see that being repeated, um, that whole stem in each of those. And you'll just want to highlight the, the stem and delete it and leave just the question itself. And we do this because later on when you're creating tables and graphs, um, it's so much easier when it just comes in with the exact uh, labels that you want rather than all of that. Please describe this, that, that, and please rate, give your rating and all of that. So that's the very first step. And then the next step um, is to look at your variables and see whether anything needs to be recorded. And what I mean by that is ideally, your data is set should be in such a way that uh, if it's a Likert scale, like one to five, lower numbers mean something negative and uh, higher numbers mean something uh, positive. And so, or, or at least they all, uh, in a set of questions, they all mean the same thing. All of those questions kind of can be interpreted in the same way. So let's look at uh, the depression questions, for example. We are asking, you know, the extent to which you feel little interest in doing things, and that's uh, very low frequencies, negative and, and very uh, high is five. And so presumably the people that rate a five or a four, the higher end of the spectrum, are more likely to be depressed. Feeling down or depressed, yes, higher, higher levels uh, correspond with higher levels of depression. Trouble falling asleep, feeling tired, poor appetite. Okay, good. So those ones don't need recording. They all mean the same thing where higher numbers mean more, more likely to be depressed. Okay. Then let's look at the sense of belonging uh, questions. The students at my school stay together. So if you strongly agree, you have a stronger sense of belonging. Okay. Uh, I feel like I belong to this school as if it were mine. Same, I feel safe. Aha, uh -huh, positive is good. The students at my school have fun together. Positive is good. When the students at my school are having fun, some are left out. Now, this is where if you strongly agree, uh, ooh, I'm sorry, this should be strongly agree. So let me just go ahead and, and change that. And actually, this will be a good lesson as well. Uh, if there's a mistake in your coding, you just simply need to change this where five is strongly agree and everything else is good and just click change and say okay. And then I'll just copy that, highlight this area and paste it and now it's updated. Okay, so we were here uh, where some students feel left out where a five isn't a good thing, whereas in the other cases, the five is a great thing. So this is one we want to reverse code. And so I'll just make a note here that Q32A10, and I'm just writing this on a piece of paper to know that I need to recode that. And I'm checking to see whether there are any others. So when I'm doing recording, I just do them all in one batch. Bullying occurs at my school. That's another one where being four or a five, not good. So A11 as well. Uh-huh. Bully, uh, the teachers at my school are sympathetic and give us support. Okay. We having uh, five is a good thing. So that one won't need recoding. 
Now, these are the two questions about sense of autonomy. My mother controls everything I do. If you strongly agree, you are not feeling autonomous. Okay, so five is a, a negative thing. And my father controls everything I do. And also in that case, uh, five is a negative thing. So we'll want to re recode those so that, again, the fives mean a good thing for, for sense of belonging as well as autonomy. So that collectively, if you have a higher score, you're in good shape. So I'm just going to recode Q31, B1, and B2. And the rest are demographic, so nothing to do there. Good. So that's the next, the second step, right? You check to make sure you don't need to reverse code anything. Now that I've identified four that I need to reverse code, I will go here to transform and I'll say recode into, you can either choose this recording into the same variable, in which case you're saying change this variable and just replace it with this new variable that I'm creating. Or you can choose record into different variables, which will maintain your old one that uh, needs reverse coding, but it will create a new one that is correct and is facing the right direction, so to speak. I choose the same variable because I have experience doing this, but if you are newer to SPSS and analysis and you're worried about making mistakes, it's safer to just say different variables so that you don't overwrite your, your file. But again, I'll use uh, this one. And you'll recall that I say 32A10 needs recording. And you can't uh, record these in a, in a batch because I'll be changing, uh, let's see. 32, yeah, let me let me first uh, drag them over. Actually, in this case, I can recode them in a batch and I'll tell you when, when you can and can't do that. Just give me one second to first bring things over so I don't confuse you. Okay, good. So I've put them in at the same time because I'm changing all, all of these are five point scales and they all need to be reversed such that five is one, four is two, etc. But now sometimes you are recoding into a different variable and you want to name it something different. And so I'd have done that one at a time because I want to call this first one le left out, the second one bullying, third one, etc. And also sometimes I need to do it one at a time if the scales are different. And so it's not in, in one set of questions, it's a three point scale and in the next it's a five point scale. So you can do it in one batch. But in my case, it's all good. I just want the fives to now be ones, the uh, fours to now be twos, the threes to now be, the, those will remain the same, that's in the middle there. And then two, to be four and one to be five. And I always add in system missing to, to be system missing. So whatever is missing in the, in the uh, old uh, world, let it also remain missing here, okay? Uh, and then I just say continue. And instead of saying, okay, I want you to press a paste. And what that does is it creates a syntax file for you. And a syntax file is simply a record of all of the commands that you've run. And, and this is useful because uh, what happens is, uh, say for instance, today I have 100 respon responses to my survey, but it's only been live for a week and it will be live for another two weeks. So I anticipate getting more data, but I can start my analysis now and I just create uh, all of my uh, commands here in the syntax. And when I get a new data set, I'll just highlight everything, press the screen button, which is play, and voila, I have a new output and I don't have to like redo everything. So that's a, a reason why we do that. There are also very many advantages to creating syntax files. Um, I've, I've had instances where I figured something out three years ago when I was doing my dissertation, but then I've, I've forgotten how to do it. And I just go back to my syntax and I'm like, oh yeah, that's how I did that. Those are the commands I used to do X, Y, and Z. And so it's, it's just always good as a researcher to keep track of your process. All right, so I will just select that and press play. And what that does it is it executes the command. 
and it goes into an output file and now it's telling me that yes i've, I've done that uh, change sometimes you get an error message here which means nope i did i wasn't able to do it because there's something wrong with how you set up your your thing but in this case um all is well now we've reverse coded so the next thing that you want to do is, um, and, and I have my notes here on, on the things that I wanna make sure we check off. Uh, okay, let's try, let's do a reliability analysis. So you'll recall in the class, I talked about reliability being that uh, people in this in a similar condition should answer your survey in a similar way and so people that say are, are highly depressed if they received your survey mary and and jane if they're both highly depressed we should uh, see kind of uh, we should see them answering uh, these questions in a similar way and rating things similarly and that's when we say our scale is reliable and so to do you can do a reliability analysis by going to analyze and then we go to, um, uh, sorry, it's been, a, where, where am I not seeing the scale? <laughs> we go to scale, reliability analysis, and we take our questions for depression, <clears throat> as well as our questions for sense of belonging and autonomy. We, we can leave out the demographic ones and we put them in there and we under statistics, we want to select uh, these ones, and I'll show you in a, in a sec uh, what, why that is, and we say continue. Again, we paste. We just get in the habit of pasting instead of just saying okay. And now it's here, so I'll run it. And when I run it, I'll get my output file. And now this is a reliability analysis, and it's telling me my Kronbach's alpha is 0.662. Now 0.7 and above is great. 0.6 to 0.7 is not so great, but it's 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 okay. Now below 0.6, uh, it starts to be problematic. But again, this is fictitious data, and 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 so I'm not surprised that uh, it didn't quite reach the highest levels. But you are looking for that as your indicator of reliability. The reason why we also selected, uh, let me see what else I want to flag here for you. Yeah, we selected scale. Scale uh, the uh, if scale mean if item is deleted, and here it just tells you how the Kronbach alpha may change if you deleted certain items. So here I'm seeing that if I deleted bullying occurs at my school, the Kronbach alpha would be 0.74. So it would achieve that 0.7 threshold that I'm looking for. And there are also a couple of others here that um, can help me improve my reliability if I were to delete them. And so I could go back in there and delete the, the ones that um, can be deleted to increase reliability and, and, and that would be fine.